that we have Gonzalo Ranieri, sorry, uh, Design Education. This is, needs to be redesigned. Thank you so much, Arjun, for this fantastic presentation. Uh, it was really wonderful. So, um, yeah, this is you. Yeah, Tomas and Arjun did a very good presentations. Well, I'm going to share my uh, screen now. When Lefteris uh, invited me to, to, to participate in, uh, in, uh, in this forum, uh, immediately I had the, this uh, background uh, uh, ghost that appeared about uh, how we have been uh, teaching education for the last years. And, I, and uh, I've changed the title of my presentation. Before it was a, a, was a, a concrete idea. It was design education needs to be redesigned, but I've changed that into a question. Uh, and now it's, uh, does design education need to be redesigned? And uh, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to present uh, the outcomes of my PhD uh, thesis, which I uh, finished uh, last uh, uh, July. Uh, and there, uh, some things arise that I think that are uh, very uh, into into that that can be very easily applied into uh, design education. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Reineri. I have a PhD in design. I'm an architect. I'm a visual designer as well, and uh, I have a master's degree in uh, environmental studies and bioclimatic uh, architecture. So, uh, from this presentation, do you expect answers, or are you open to new questions? These two images that you're showing are the results of uh, how uh, we have been doing design for uh, the last uh, decades. Uh, what you see is something that is very, very common, unfortunately, in our planet right now. Wherever you go, especially in uh, uh, undeveloped countries, which are suffering the most uh, impact of, uh, of our profession, of our discipline, uh, and not just only as a garbage, as you can see here, that is contaminating a river, but also as human traffics. These are human. Uh, these are children in uh, uh, in Africa, uh, which are slaved and uh, taken into mines for uh, uh, taking uh, out minerals that we use in uh, almost all of our uh, electrodomestic uh, items, especially cell phones. So uh, this presentation arises and comes from this problem, basically an ethical problem. Design has an ethical problem from his uh, design education as, and especially from its design practice. So uh, what we see now in, in the years we are at this moment, uh, probably we all know it's COP26 is happening. And there we see the we have a huge problem with uh, the contamination around the world. We are living in an era that is uh, uh, destroying our planet uh, and obviously destroying our society and the way we are, have been living for the past uh, decades. Uh, we are teaching design in many schools, not all, but in many schools, we are still teaching design the way it used to be and uh, done 100 years ago. We still look at uh, as, uh, references like the Bauhaus uh, or other European models and uh, or other uh, South American models like uh, the Escuela Artes Oficios or other uh, uh, really old dated uh, paradigmas. Uh, we need to change this. Uh, basically, uh, to the uh, uh, causes I've just presented very briefly, uh, and we have to, in a certain way, start forgetting about our traditions and start thinking new ways of how to do design and uh, even questioning if the word design is still uh, a good word for us uh, due to all the other uh, con uh, connotations that it has, for example, in uh, fashion design or in uh, uh, on, on other more uh, art-related uh, areas. Uh, do we still need or do we still have to use this word, for example, design, or should we start thinking of a new word for uh, design? Uh, everything we do uh, is uh, related to our ecological niche. This is the place where we live. We all have different uh, ecological needs. Every person in this forum has a totally different reality. Uh, we live actually, uh, many of us, even we are in the same year, we live in different eras. If you travel to a developed country, the way we uh, 
the way uh, that it's lived in those countries is totally different than those of developing countries. So why are we pretending to present and uh, teach the same models of design everywhere? So the first question we have to do is, should we consider, are you incorporating time and space into your school paradigm, not just copying what is being done in a certain school because that school has a certain reputation? Well, that reputation has been arised, has been reached because they have been able to probably uh, understand the era they are living. But we have to understand, for example, here in Chile, that the era we are living is totally different than the era that is being lived in uh, New York or in uh, Stockholm or in some other developed uh, cities or countries. Uh, with this uh, in mind, my uh, thesis uh, started questioning the, the definitions of design we had uh, been using for the last uh, time. And I decided to uh, uh, go into uh, trying to understand what design was actually. The conclusions of my uh, PhD thesis uh, started from the uh, trying to find a more uh, environmentally friendly uh, uh, definition for design, models for design. Uh, and it came from uh, two Chilean biologists, uh, Humberto Madurana and Francisco Varela. Uh, they developed a concept which is called autopoiesis. Uh, and this is the definition of what uh, differentiates living uh, beings from non-living beings. I took this uh, model based on uh, the work by uh, Nicholas Luhmann, which is a sociologist, and who applied it to, uh, so, uh, to uh, social systems. And so I decided, well, maybe we can also apply this same uh, concept into uh, 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 design to see if we can uh, apply it into design. Uh, the concept basically says that autopoietic systems are those systems that are capable of constructing themselves and reproducing and repairing themselves. So basically we as human beings, as uh, living beings, we construct our body, we construct our social relations and that it can be also applied to social systems, as Nicholas Luhmann did. And when I decided to uh, see if design could be uh, viewed as such a uh, systemic entity. And actually, the conclusions of my uh, uh, PhD thesis says, yes, design is a discipline that constructs itself from the inside out. So uh, this... Uh, uh, this approach uh, uh, showed up certain characteristics of design, which we're going to see now, and that can be applied to uh, uh, design education as well. As you can see, we are doing a multitasking, uh, this is a multitasking presentation because what you have on screen are questions that can be uh, related to what I'm talking directly. So in the, in the following uh, slides, this is going to be more evident. Uh, the conclusions uh, stated that, well, first of all, design is uh, created by designers, basically from a, a social uh, dialogue. We, we decide what, is, uh, what, what, what methods or what, uh, uh, what is considered as design and what is not considered as design. And uh, there are seven components which arose from the, uh, from the uh, design, uh, from the thesis design, uh, research and the First one, and the most uh, commented one, is that uh, design is a human uh, action. Uh, in, it's very important to uh, uh, say that what I'm saying now is the result of a, a vast research from literature and design, and also uh, interviews I did for uh, uh, to more than 350 uh, uh, designers around the world from 35 countries. So basically, this is the conclusion of that work. And uh, it's uh, not my predisposition, but the predisposition of the uh, design uh, society or design uh, uh, colleagues. The first one is the human component. And the human component, it's humans take three different uh, 
instances when they are uh, talking about design. One, of course, is the human, uh, is the designer itself, uh, which is the inner uh, uh, actor, which is the one who uh, takes decisions and defines what is designed, but also who does the project. There's also uh, another uh, human being which is uh, related to design, which is the client manufacturer. Uh, they have to uh, uh, direct relation with the designer. And there's also a third one, which is the user or the beneficiary of, uh, the, of the uh, designer. There's a difference between the user and the beneficiary. The user is the one that uh, actually applies or utilizes the, the uh, uh, design product, for example, a lawn mover. If I ha I I'm the one who's uh, cutting the grass, I'm the user of the uh, lawn mover, but the beneficiary can be someone else uh, who doesn't actually interact directly with the uh, lawn mover, but actually uh, is the one that benefits from being able to lay on that gra uh, just uh, cut grass without uh, uh, having to do so between uh, uh, snakes or whatever could live in a, in a tall class. So there's a differentiation as well. Human beings have uh, different and uh, complex, it's a, different, it's a complex uh, entity, which, uh, and which uh, ranges from the, his psychological, his physical and his sociological aspects. So uh, human components are uh, probably the most important one. And that's why uh, it's, it's uh, important that when you consider uh, creating a new syllabus or a new uh, curriculum, you have to consider as human as the center of the, uh, of the uh, design process. The second uh, most important, according to, to the interviews, was the theological component or the causal dimension. What, what, what ignites the uh, design process? It's, there's a desire, there's a need in the user, in the beneficiary that actually uh, uh, encourages a designer to start a project. It can also be a desire or a beneficiary from the client before, uh, because he wants to expand his market or because a, society, a, a, a government has decided to uh, uh, introduce some, uh, some service design into its uh, uh, municipalities in order to uh, uh, make better... Uh, uh, citizens' uh, attention. Uh, also, uh, in, the, in the frontier, there's a negotiation about this uh, uh, the council, because uh, what the people want is probably something that the client or the, 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 the manufacturer can't do. So there's always a negotiation, or probably because design is unable to do so. And of course, that, that, uh, that uh, encourages uh, opportunity and, uh, and a problem that has to be solved. The uh, third one is the operational component or the procedural dimension. Uh, this is also very important because designers decide how they do things. We as designers have, have uh, developed uh, certain ways of doing things. Uh, we started very associated into art and we have been uh, flirting with other disciplines through uh, our uh, evolution as a, as a discipline. And sometimes we, we, we get near into a uh, systemic uh, area. Sometimes we talked with, uh, with, uh, uh, with other uh, disciplines and we have created our own uh, ways of doing things. We have uh, also used a lot of many times experimental approaches for, uh, for doing things when we don't know how to do something. We uh, experiment a lot and sometimes uh, we don't either do it ourselves, we just commission this to someone else. So, for example, uh, if we don't uh, have uh, the, the proper uh, uh, tools for preparing or uh, researching or, uh, or manufacturing something, we tell some other discipline to, to do so. So uh, that's also a, a, a way how we do uh, things. Transitional component or the temporal dimension is uh, basically the past, present, and future Pre uh, applied to many things. Applied, for example, to design education, applied to the life cycle of a product, uh, 
applied to uh, uh, how we develop as professionals ourselves, how we see discipline is very different when we just graduate as after when we have 30 years of experience, we have transition in our evolution and our tools. And many times it's said that, for example, uh, seasoned designers, they can uh, uh, approach problems very fast in a certain way because they have a, a know-how that is very difficult to uh, try to ask it for a, a, a junior uh, person. And uh, so that's also very important to take in consideration because sometimes you see... Uh, places where they say, I'm going to teach you how to be an art director, which from my opinion is something that you reach, for example, after many years of uh, experience. And so transitional, uh, the components basically past, present or future. Many, many times the past, you don't see it too much. And sometimes you, the present, you don't see it too much as well. You don't know where the, the, the materials are coming. You don't know what is going to be the end of, uh, of your product, for example. Uh, another component is the relational component, how, how we as designers, how we as uh, schools, uh, design schools, uh, relate to others, relate beyond our, dis our design frontiers, how we relate to medicine, how we relate to engineering, how do we relate to a uh, craftsman, how do we relate to other disciplines, and, and that's basically... Uh, or how we relate to other designers as well. When we are doing that, we are talking about disciplinary relationships. And those conversations is where we create design. But we also have interdisciplinary, uh, which where we uh, talk to other uh, 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 disciplines on a one-to-one -one basis. When we also work transdisciplinary, when we go and work into another discipline as well, and when we work multidisciplinary, when we work together with other uh, 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 disciplines. There's a very good definition for this done in, by Erloff and Marshall in a, in a uh, design dictionary. It's a book that you should uh, uh, look. It's a very, very nice book. Uh, the the, the uh, six... Uh, Component is the observational component. Designers observe their uh, surroundings in different ways. And designers from different speciali specialities observe this, uh, their uh, uh, ecological needs in different ways. Uh, the first observation we should do is the introspection. We as designers, if especially when we're talking about uh, uh, education, we should talk, uh, we should observe our profession. We, the first observation is to the insight. We should uh, question our, uh, uh, our uh, uh, methods. We should question our gurus. We should question our, the way we are teaching. We should question our tools. But we also uh, should use observation as a a uh, tool to dialogue with others. When we do observation, we are uh, obs uh, having, uh, we observe uh, uh, people do things. We observe our surroundings. We observe uh, our client. We observe our societies. And of course, from that comes learning. And with learning is what we can uh, use to make uh, decisions uh, and uh, be able to uh, uh, Become uh, successful in, in our uh, project creations and especially in uh, cr uh, creating or uh, forming new designers. And the last one is the allopoietic component, which is the physical dimension. Uh, here is are the tools and materials we use. This when I, materials or tools don't take ex extremely into the physical idea because they can be uh, certain ideas as well and. But it's with the components, the things with what we build a chair, with what we build a, 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 a poster, typography, for example, inks, a wood, also a certain ways of doing things can also be uh, the, the, the sound we use to, uh, to achieve certain uh, attention from, from, from our viewer, for example. And all these seven components are what the... Uh, design community said that we needed to uh, 
to have in order to talk about design. After, after uh, uh, doing this, uh, this is the model that, that I came out. This is a the representation of the model. The community and the literature actually uh, named all these components. Uh, the absence of uh, one of these components actually is understood from an autopoietic systemic uh, view as in the case we don't have one of th these ones, we are not in, in confronting design, we are probably confronting another uh, discipline or probably we are confronting uh, a new form of design. And that's what uh, the, the idea of should we keep the world or not. Maybe this is what was evidence uh, uh, Two years ago, maybe it has changed after pandemic. Uh, probably had, it has, uh, but it, the idea of having a dynamic system that changes and adapts to any other uh, to any project or to any uh, educational uh, necessity, uh, it's very interesting because some uh, schools have uh, are very. Uh, uh, based on, for example, materials. For them, materials is very important. For others, tradition is very sport, but important. For others, the business, the client area is very important. But as you can see, they all fit into the system which can uh, adapt and uh, basically uh, manu uh, manubrate. I don't know if that actually exists, that word. But uh, it can adapt into uh, different realities. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm more than willing to, uh, to answer them. Uh, you can uh, reach me at my website, which is Big Bang Thinking. Uh, so uh, there uh, you, you have links to academia. I have a paper that I presented in Cumulus, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, in Cumulus Rome uh, a few months ago, which, uh, which uh, represents and states this uh, very clearly this uh, approach. Also, uh, in, if you go to my website, from there you can jump into my uh, academia uh, account where you can see uh, my uh, PhD thesis, which is for, uh, to download. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm uh, more than willing to, to uh, share any uh, of the findings, which what you have seen is very just uh, the uh, very, very uh, few things about it. That's it. I don't know if... Uh... Thanks so much. We're going to go into the panel. Uh, sorry for the for the inconvenience, but yesterday we, we checked it out everything but left Teddy's and it was working perfectly. No, no, it's fine. It's fine, honestly. Uh, so now we are all in the panel, so thank you so much. Welcome, Christopher, as well. Thank you for the fantastic presentation before. So, I mean, again, it's open to you and any questions you have to ask. We also have, you know, Christopher from the previous uh, batch as well. Uh, over to you guys. Yeah, firstly, so uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah sorry. Sorry for the all the technical issues I had. Um, five hours trying to connect to the to the presentation, but finally I'm here. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Letters, for making all this happen. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm happy to share with Gonzalo, Tommaso, and Arjun for for this uh, panel. And yeah, what do you, what guys do you want to talk about? I'm, I'm open to any topic. Anything that interests you? We're also waiting for questions for, from the audience as well. Cool. Gonzalo, Gonzalo, by the way, have you have you thought of any substitutes for the word design yourself? No, not yet. <laughs> I'm just questioning the, the, the word it's, itself because I think it's over abused. Uh, you see yeah. everywhere uh, the world, uh, I don't know, you can buy uh, design uh, pants, designer pants. And then uh, I, 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 I think I think it's, uh, I have this uh, discipline uh, thing, uh, especially when we are talking about teaching design, what should we actually teach? 
And uh, okay. when are we teaching design or when are we teaching, teaching something else? Uh, when are we teaching uh, art? I, I, I do art myself, but when I'm doing art, I try to believe I'm an artist. Uh, I, I know I bring things from design. I know I bring things from architecture, but there's a mindset that changes. Yep. And for example, uh, in, in, in the model I just presented, there's something that is sometimes it's present in art, but it's sometimes it's not. In design, it's always yep. present. For example, this, uh, the, 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 Teleological. When 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 the client comes to you and he asks for you uh, for certain things, uh, the, the causal thing is in design. This it's always present. In in, in mm. art, isn't always present. For example, an artist, he can simply uh, let him go, uh, and yep. he's gonna figure out what what's gonna come out afterwards. Uh, but for design, uh, from the evidence I I, I collected. It must be there. It can be something mm -hmm. that you as a designer decide to, I'm going to do my own business, like uh, Christian was talking in, in, in early in the, mo in, in, in the morning, my morning, your afternoon. Uh, and, it, and that's very true. Designers can be their own client. It's difficult, yep. but you can do so. And, but it's, but, but the, 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 the request is there. Uh, so... Uh, if, if I found a new word, no, I haven't found a new word yet. I would love to. I found a word for what is not design, which is, mm -hmm. uh, which at least is a step. I thought so, I had what invented, is that word? Inven invented it, but uh, of course, after when you Google it, you say, well, there was someone who already used the word. But where you see it's proto design. It's proto -design. something that's mm -hmm. proto design, it's something that's before design. Uh, okay. The model, the model, uh, Barella and uh, about autopoiesis. They say if you want to define something, you also have, at the same moment you are defining what it's not design. So I think this is an Indian and, practice. It's called neti neti. Not, yeah? not this, not this, not this. Not so you this, first you this. discover what is not and, <laughs> and what is left so, in uh, the end. At least is I what have it a word for, for not design, <laughs> which is proto design, which is before design, which is not design. And, and, uh, it's a starting point. I think it's interesting because um, I remember whenever I was going to study graphic design in, in the late 90s and in the beginning of the 2000s, um, everything was graphic design. That was all the title of the, of the universities that, that, that it was. There was a, 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 a bachelor in graphic design. And I've realized, I don't know if you guys are, are, are the same, but over the last year or so, there's been less use of the term graphic design in, in, in the terms of the title or the masters, for example, that you're going to study. They use like other words that are kind of like um, interactive media, a problem solving and all these different other words. And, and it's something that over the last 20 years i've seen that that transition that used to be everything used to be graphic design i mean all the titles and masters and stuff and over the past couple of years i've seen they're, they're getting away from it where i am a teacher here i'm a professor here in keto ecuador and the title is graphic design and i believe in five or ten years time there'll be no titles or even masters in graphic design or even design to be more uh, dealing with problem solving, interactive design, user face design, and other other titles like as that. So I think bit by bit, uh, I agree that the uh, Gonzalo like bit by bit like the word or the term design is going uh, going away. To be honest. Okay, so let's focus on the questions because we're getting questions from the audience. Yeah, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's focus on the, on the question we have here on the screen. Yes, I'm, I'm reading. So, okay, Susanna is asking, uh, Rifles in Porta, okay, not just on campus, but online as well, sure, into the real world. So you're talking in terms of well-being, right? In terms of 
practice of design. So let's see if I understood your question. Not sure. So I say that uh, in design, so because we always talk about others, so we need to, we say all the time in our classes, right? So we need to empathize with others. So, but before we do that, in any sort of design discipline that goes from architecture to graphic to any others, to user experience, we really need to know the feeling and how to express. And sometimes we really need, in terms of well-being, even to know how to have a moment, okay, to have a break. That's, I see, as important because, for instance, many students start wondering why in design we need to use all the time computer, okay? Some students try, start to say they are afraid that by using only computer main tool, they will be just employer capable to just do a task, a quick task as sort fast as possible, right? Without any engagement, let's say, after a while. So that's why even uh, when, uh, as designer thinks, we need a way to recap the understanding of our body. So that is important because as many, even the panel before, is, they say context is what we are and the culture make us what we are. We receive and perceive reality in different, in a different way. Some of us, I see here, even this panel, born in one country and live in another. So now Balvir say, is this a new form of colonization? Um, I don't think so. So what I see now, for instance, in my case, but maybe can apply others. So you talked before to some French philosopher. So what I'm trying to do here is to try to do experiment in a different context. So just because I noticed that, so of course we still affected, but what Bauhaus the other European Western school did in the past, but there is not yet a clear statement from Asian country in terms of what means design or different approach. So what I try to do, for instance, tell them that there is no right approach to follow. So you need really to embed who you are and then you create, as even somebody before said, so uh, you are a designer in your local situation, in your context, but you have to be aware of the global context, of course. So until we don't make this clear, we don't have to say to students, so you will design for people the other side of the world. So start to design for yourself, your family, who is close to you. That's help really to engage with others. So you really need to experience your own persona. So that's why I do all the exercise that call back the 60 and the Roy Ascot experiment, you know, in terms of behaviorism, experience the senses, feeling your body. Because when you design for someone else, how you can say you do if you don't even know your own feeling? And then to extract your feeling from something tangible to create something that people can see and experience is another step. Sometimes it's care for students, for instance, when I ask them first time to move from product design, students that use it to use a uh, physical product, right? Until a few years ago, product design was not digital, but was chair and furniture. So nowadays, when we call product design is a UX, basically. But I have the class on product in the old term, and they ask students to move to bring something from the performance. And that helped them. At first, they are scared because they don't know where to start. But then, through the brief, I listen what they have to say. And then, 
I build up the brief according to their feeling. They were scared and then they build up about this. Thank you, Tommaso. What about the, all the other panel members? I, I, I would like to talk a little bit about colonization. Mm -hmm. I think uh, colonization is a word that embodies many ideas. Uh, uh, colonization is, uh, is you can you can understand it as a uh, as a period of time uh, when Europe expanded into and uh, when, when when new worlds were uh, were conquered by uh, by uh, European uh, uh, power, uh, and that's a, that's a word that has uh, uh, been uh, uh, extended into many different. Uh, 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 areas as well. Of course, uh, one thing is the colonization uh, through arms, another is the colonization through ideas. Uh, me living in Chile, uh, it's, it's been always uh, watching Europe from the outside. So uh, we have this uh, idea that uh, based on colonization, that uh, the, what's what's original from the country it's not the good so you have to become a christian and you have to uh, uh, acquire certain uh, 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 forms of, of living uh, our cities look like european cities uh, uh, our costumes our religion uh, is, uh, is is european uh, i think that it's something that is still present up to date up to date, uh, schools here, uh, schools are probably in many uh, 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 places around the world, still look uh, and copy models from Europe, from the States, from the predominant uh, cultures at the moment, especially if we think as uh, uh, who has the, 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 the ownership of media, uh, uh, Hollywood, uh, uh, it's 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 uh, the music itself industry. They project certain ideas and certain ideals of how we should live. Uh, but the difference between now and uh, 200 years ago or 400 years ago is that now uh, we have the possibility to choose, which we didn't have before. Uh, we, uh, uh, human rights have changed and uh, the e certain uh, equality uh, uh, has been perceived. Uh, it's not reached yet, I understand that. But uh, a design school anywhere in the world, they can decide now uh, what is their, go their model of education going to be. They can copy Bauhaus from uh, 1919 or they can develop one uh, from themselves that uh, responds to their reality and their context. That's something we couldn't do uh, beforehand. Uh, now, being that said, I understand that many institutions, most of them, are subject to uh, the uh, uh, waves produced by the uh, economic uh, reality. Uh, many of these institutions are private and uh, in very in the back uh, in certain layers which you can't probably uh, see and uh, which are many times tried to hide. Uh, they are uh, uh, a business. Uh, it's property of uh, an institution. It's property of a government. It's property of a, of a religious uh, uh, group. It's property of a... Of a, uh, of a single person uh, and in that case they respond to what the market asks for and that's why we uh, usually see many uh, replications of uh, uh, successful uh, educational uh, models uh, which are imported, are copied and uh, are distributed without many uh, 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 manipulations in order to try to accommodate them to the reality. Uh, those are the realities where we work. Uh, taking what uh, what Tommaso was saying, what Christian was saying, uh, also what uh, what uh, uh, Ayun uh, talked about. We have different realities and we should uh, pretend to accommodate these predominant models to our uh, reality. If we don't do any transformations and we just apply them, we are going to produce only 
uh, uh, future professionals that won't have uh, uh, a successful career because when they go out, probably they're going to study uh, something. When they go out into their media, they won't have any uh, places where to work because the industry doesn't uh, uh, exist because the society is not prepared for uh, that kind of uh, uh, reasoning. Uh, so we have to be very careful, especially uh, because we are responsible of the future of uh, our students. Fantastic. Uh, we have we have very few uh, few minutes left on this panel. So if anybody wants to say anything more on these topics, from the, with the ones that have not spoken so far. Yeah, it's interesting that um, some of the questions and comments from Susanna, Palvir, and and Frank and lots of others. And this, there was a, a, an interesting conversation before talking about globalization, um, which for me is a very interesting topic um, in terms of being a graphic designer because it's kind of like a double-edged double sword in, in, in one way or another because, because whenever you're a designer um, in in Ecuador and also Gonzalo, you'll know this, and I'm sure the other people too. If you if you if you stay closer to your roots and to your own culture and your own people, you'll get the best results. And there's a famous quote from Stefan Sagmeister who who said this also that whenever graphic designers, if to be a, the best graphic designer in Ecuador, you need to be more Ecuadorian, um, and you need to stay connected to what uh, brought you up from the start because when you try to connect to other countries and other cultures that maybe you don't have any idea about it's difficult in that aspect but then on the other side day by day the whole world is becoming one and this whole idea of uh, working together and collaboration is amazing it's absolutely amazing but uh, one of the things I always say to my students here in Ecuador is connect to uh, your local language, connect to Quechua, connect to your stories here in Ecuador first. And then if you want, you can learn about other cultures all around the world to travel, to explore different languages, uh, to learn how people eat. Um, and I, I'm an Irish boy and I love my Irish food, but sometimes I like other food too, right? But the thing is that at the start, at the beginning, especially for the young generation of designers, they should always connect first to their local um, cities and countries, and then they can expand and collaborate and work uh, on a bigger scale later. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it, it's very difficult because a lot of the people I see, a lot of people in Ecuador, they try to copy design in America or they try to design the copy, uh, like Gonzalo mentioned earlier before, in terms of like a Bauhaus and all these amazing styles of graphic design, but actually they should stick to their to their their roots and their history of themselves. And through that, they find more about themselves and they grow even more. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Arjun, what about the typeface from the 1890? So how, how can the, the typeface designed in 1890 have a relevance in all this? And, and how, how does it have a relevance in India as well? A typeface from England. I do. And, and... Oh, wait. Could you, could you hear Sorry. any of yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, I don't really know what relevance uh, the font might have in India. <laughs> I wanted to make it, and that's why I did. Uh, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't really think about the relevance of it. It's. Uh, I think. I think I could. I could answer Gonzalo. Gonzalo, do you think craftsmanship might be a good alternative to design? You know, being a craftsman. Craftsman. Because that, that's. <laughs> Yeah, craftsman is, that's is well, I, no, no, because craftsman no, already no. has its meaning. It already has its yeah. history. You can you can see uh, well from my point of view, 
Bauhaus was a craftsman uh, uh, school, uh, which developed and was used it as a, as a as a model for design afterwards. But uh, but actually they, they 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 did the same that had been done uh, 100 years before in uh, not a 100 75 years before in Santiago Chile for example where there was this craft man uh, the artist of his arts and craft and crafts schools and you can see that in Valencia uh, 300 years ago and you can see so design has to do something more with the relation of all this. Uh, uh, tools we have on our uh, uh, for for our use. Uh, it has to do more of how we uh, arrange things. I my last uh, uh, understandings of design is taking me very much after my of course of my PhD uh, into systemic uh, approaches okay. into uh, design. Uh, I, I I believe uh, which embodies. Uh, craftsmen, which embodies graphic design, which embodies uh, system design, uh, which embodies a lot of uh, uh, approaches uh, with this more holistic general uh, perspective from, from above. Uh, I, I, I want to address something. Uh, Bauhaus, I think it was an incredible uh, 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 situation, an incredible school, but uh, it was incredible in 1919, uh, hmm. not in 20, uh, 21 or 22. We, we, we must, and uh, I, I think what you did with the typography, it's, it's uh, brilliant. We must learn from our past in order to construct hmm. our future. Uh, if we don't learn from our past, we are going to commit the same errors. We're going to do yep. the same... Uh, uh, we have we, we we have a history. We have a uh, a past, a present, and a future. Uh, we we must acknowledge our past definitely. Uh, as uh, as uh, and we must acknowledge what uh, Quechua did before. Uh, they they did they did something with a uh, with design probably. When you go when you here in Chile we have the uh, Museum of Pre-Columbian Art. Art, what has art to do in pre-Columbian uh, reality. They didn't produce art objects. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you watch them, they are all, most all utilitarian. The concept mm -hmm. of art didn't exist in their realities. And that's where colonialism really comes in. Wonderful. I'm so sorry, but we have to wrap up. No. Uh, yes, yes. This this forum. We, we, this this panel. This panel. Only getting started. Uh, I know. I know but, uh, we're not, yeah. Already running late. Unless somebody has a quick a quick remark to add. No, just that uh, that that comment of Gonzalo is, is so important because um, when you whenever you're becoming a designer, like I always say, the history of a uh, of of a country, of a person, of a family, makes them who they are. And like some of the best graphic designers here in Ecuador connect to the Incas, they connect to uh, the language of Quechua, and it's absolutely mm. amazing, absolutely amazing the work that they do. Like Vanessa Zuniga, uh, Paul Duralde, Peter, Peter Mosfeld, he has an unbelievable uh, work about uh, yeah. birds. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic, absolutely amazing. And it connects to the culture of Ecuador, the culture of Latin America. And that's the true gold. Uh, would that be a cliche of connecting Inca and Machu Picchu and all these beautiful places? Uh, that's the true gold of being uh, a designer. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So from that point, uh, we must wrap up the conversation. We could continue all offline. You connect and have private conversations. You know all about that on the main stage. You go back and you can message everyone here so you can continue with this conversation. Uh, and of course, we'll continue with the forum. 